Praise the Lord and welcome. This is Get the Word in Your Face International Ministries coming to you with a word from the Lord today. I want to give God praise because He is God. He is the Most High God. There is no other like Him in the earth or under the earth or in the universe, nowhere. All I know is that He is God and God alone. He is the Most High, El El Yon. He is El Che, the Living God, our Majesty on High. And there is no other beside Him. We give him praise for his son, Jesus Christ, whom he has given us as a propitiation. Oh, God, thank you for our salvation. Thank you for bringing us into your covenant promise. Your promise, Father God. Listen, I can't use too many big words because people don't always perceive. They hear and they hear, but they don't get the true meaning of what is being said. God is good, and he is. And we have to learn to thank him no matter how we feel or what we think. No matter what's going on before us or behind us. No matter what's on either side of us. God is. So we thank him because of his son and we thank him for his Holy Spirit. We thank you for his angels that he puts around us on guard for us. For us. We thank him because his word is true. Jesus is our light and our salvation. Thank you, Father God, for all that you have given us, your goodness and your grace, in Jesus' name. If my voice sounds kind of heavy, it's just that I've, I've seen a lot, I've heard a lot, and I'm tired of seeing and I'm tired of hearing so much unbelief, so much negative stuff. You know, this world has... It, it's it's got evil in it. It's got terrible things going on everywhere. And I uh, I question: Does anyone have anything good that they can see or say when the word tells us to meditate on these good things, to practice these good things, to keep our minds stayed on things that are lovely, things that are true? It's in the book of Philippians. And yet. All I hear are murmurings and complainings of, I mean, just people who lo say that they believe God. It hurts me for those who are close to me that say that they don't believe God. Yet I have to ask myself, what witness am I showing? What am I pouring forth out of my mouth? What are my actions dictating before those that I love? Hmm. It's a good question. I believe that we have come to a point where we are put to test, put to a test, put to to believe what we believe and stand up and proclaim God's name regardless of the situations of life, of what we think, what we want, what we need, what we feel, regardless of rather the one next to us, our sons love God or don't love God. Regardless of rather what our husbands act like, regardless of what our daughters and our mothers and family siblings act like, Jesus proved that already. He said, "Those who are of the, of the, my father are my brothers and sisters are those who follow and do my my father's will." Now I might not have put that in the right kind of words, but it's true. Those who are my brothers and sisters are those who do his will. Those That's my family. Does that mean that I deny everybody else around me that I love? No. But if I love him more than anything else, then that love that is in me will project to them. Because I'm not going to stop loving God or talking about him just because they're around. But is the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ that draws men. Jesus said that he'd make me a fisher of men. So if Jesus, if I, if I, if I come and follow him when he called and I, and I, and I might, I might, you responded, I want Jesus. Then he's cru that my flesh is, is now crucified in Christ. I am learning a new way to live and to walk and to be. Therefore his righteous, he said that he'd, Make my righteousness to shine as the noonday because I desire him more than I desire 
the evil path that life planned out for all of us. I'm going to go to the book of Romans in just a minute. I, I, I just believe that, I'm, I'm sorry that I feel this way. In, in a way, I feel, I feel bad because I don't know what direction I'm going in right now. All I know is that all the unbelief that I've heard, all the doubting, all the murmuring and complaining I, I've seen and heard, has just landed me in a spot where I'm just like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with this picture? When If you've read the Word of God and you say that you believe Him, then you know that the murmurings and, murmurings and complainings of Israel landed them in the condition that they're in. You know, that unbelief, the murmuring and complaining is unbelief before God. So why do we do it? If the Bible, not if, the Bible says that if we love, how can we love our, say we love God and hate our brother? And, and yet we, we do this very thing. We accuse each other to each other. And we kill ourselves. The, the Bible says, be careful that you do not chew and devour one another. And yet, they continually do it. No one closes their mouth and, and appreciates and worships the true God. I'm tired of their confusion that they've set before me. When I came into the church, I expected people who knew God, who loved Him and had faith. But well, where is this faith? Where is this, this trust in God above all things? Where is the authority and the power of the church of Jesus Christ? They hardly even say his name. They say in his name. But they don't say the name Jesus as if they were going to offend somebody. Am I ashamed? No, I'm glad God bought me this far so that I could see the things that I see. But I need him to define the words of my mouth and give me the clearest thoughts that I've ever had so that I can look at his word and perceive it the right way and speak it out the right way so that you would know him in the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So that we ourselves would be truly crucified with Christ so that he would live in us and have his way. God's way is the right way. I don't, and you know, I don't look for my happiness from the world. TV doesn't make me happy. It's nice to watch a good program, but that doesn't make me happy. God alone is my refuge and my strength. He is that peace that I need. He is the one who has given us uh, the glorious hope. We see so, we are so full of every situation and every circumstance, the winds and the waves and the terrible things, the, what is it, the, the wars and ru rumors of wars, the nations that are rising up against nations, that we, the very elect of God, the called of God, are confused. I thank God that he has shortened the days for us. Yet I want my uh, I want to do His will before He can before Jesus can get here. I want you to know Him by His name. I want you to know that He alone is God. Oh, Father, I pray right now that you would, you know, Lord God, just take a wind and blow away every situation and circumstance so that they can see You. Now it doesn't mean that in the name of Jesus. Now that doesn't mean that. The situations and circumstances of life are going to stop. You're still going to have a gas bill and you're still going to have a house payment. What I'm saying is in that secret place where, where God is, that you would come into where that place is with him so you can see who he is, so you can take and understand that above all things, he is God. He alone is God. And there there is no one before him. We serve, we have a God who is above all things. He is full of life. And he cre everything that he created, if it doesn't remain in him, if it doesn't trust, rest, and lean on, rely on him, 
It will suffer damnation. It will perish. It will die outside of himself. He sustains all life outside of him is death. And we need to understand that that's, that's it right there. That's enough. He's, he, he called me to be born in the earth and he called, he will, he knows the day that I'm going to die. Everything has a season and everything has a time. Everything. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest, it's, it's right before you, in them, for God has showed it unto them. Now, you would think that that was just uh, people in the church who lead the church. No, that's everybody. Because the sun and the moon and the stars proclaim him every single day. I don't, we don't worship the sun, the moon, and the stars. They were created by God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he's given them. Everything that you see is, is, a, is a witness of who he is. There's so many things about this earth that are so extraordinary. The bugs, the birds, the fish, the, the, the things deep in the ocean. Yet we still lean to our own understanding. We give animals personalities. We give animals personalities. Oh, man. Romans 1 and 19, because that which may be known of God is, is before us, it is manifest, it is in our eyes. For God hath showed it unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. But because, because when that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither, they didn't glorify him as God, and uh, they neither were thankful, they didn't thank him, but became vain in their imaginations, and in their foolish hearts, their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of Change the glory, glory of the uncorruptible God, uncorruptible God, into the image made like corruptible man. Made like the image, made like a corruptible man. I have to say it again because I, I don't believe that we can hear. And I, and I know that this has to reach deep down into your heart so that you can see that God is who he says he is. Recently, I just, uh, had somebody tried to friend me on YouTube, and he was ripping up a Bible, and, uh, said that we had to get the Word, you know, we, we get the Word, and all we needed was the Holy Spirit, and after that, you just rip up the book. Well, I'm sorry, dude, that's not how it works. And no, yeah, I, I, yeah, I used to sleep with my Bible, I don't anymore, because it breaks my, the binding of your book, <coughs> but... This word is my drink every single day. You see, the world is out there before me every single day, teaching me and repeating its doctrine to me. The devil is very crafty and can trick us in, in, into believing a lie. I need the word of God. I believe the word of God. And I'm not going to get it just from looking into the air and... and uh, you see, that's just too easy to lean on to my own understanding. I need this guideline, this inspired written word of God in my face. This is my, my drink, my meat. This reminds me of the history that the world is trying to erase. So why would I tear this up? 
this is the the last history book that we have and you can sprout out how much a uh, uh, King James or Schofield or whoever translated the Bible into what it is right now you can spout out as much as you want about their personalities and all that stuff but this is the infallible written Word of God you know I dare not to trust in my imagination and rip up something that God gave us as a guide, as a light. He takes through his, this word, this written word, and reveals his truth to us. No, not in many different ways, but in one way, by his spirit. Don't be fooled. Don't, don't, don't be fooled. God is true and he's not a liar. He gave us his word and Jesus said that not one jot nor tittle of this word not one little writing, not one little thing would be thrown away. Now, forgive me for not being literal, but if you are such a Bible scholar and you know what all this says, then you know that what I'm speaking is true. If you really have the Holy Spirit, then you know, then, then something in you right now is lighting up. Something in you is drawing you to the Word of God. To study it, to, to find out if what I'm saying is right. Because you love him. The Spirit of God doesn't speak about himself. He only speaks about Christ. He speaks about Jesus Christ. He was sent into the He was given to us so that we so that we would be reminded of the truth. Because in our own strength we could not do it. As much as, as much as back in the Old Testament, they had the Torah. And they still have the Torah today. Thank God. I praise God for Israel. Because they had this first. But let us not make the same mistake. They had the Torah, but they did not have the Spirit of God living on the inside of them to lead them into all truth. But God, by has, through Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus has given us his Holy Spirit, sent him into the world to, so that we could be kept by the word of God. So don't throw away your Bible. For those who want to say, don't go to church, I, I've heard, I tell you, I've heard so much that I'm bothered in my heart. For those who say not to go to church on Sunday, let me tell you something, the devil is a liar. We need to, it, it, I mean, if you can go to church as much as you can, go to church as much as you can, but know God. This is the problem. It is not stopping going to church. Don't stop going to church. Be, it is that each individual person who says that I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord has the responsibility of getting into the Word of God and studying, reading, drinking, and eating, having a personal relationship with Him. Jesus died for our personal relationship so we could come back in to the Father's presence, back into his promised covenant for us so that we could live in him. When Adam and Eve were, were in the garden and they, they took of that fruit, when they took of that fruit, they broke the promise. They broke their covering. Jesus Christ gave us back the covering. So we sit down here and we eat and we drink. They come. They they have come. The Father and the Son have come to supper with us, to sup with us, to sit down with us, and he we are eating and we're drinking this word of God, and He is leading us in His truth because we believe that He is God and that He is able to do all things. Him who who sent His Son for for us to be able to to come back into righteousness with Him. We try to do it in our own strength. Without the Word, it is impossible. Without His Holy Spirit, it is impossible. But Jesus, the living Word of God, the express image of His person, came to this earth and gave us life. Gave us our life back in God. The circumcision of the heart is the name of this. I haven't even gotten to the scripture yet. But we... We got to come out of the things that we've been eating and drinking in the world. 
And you know what those are for you. You know what things you've participated in, what things you've allowed in your house, in your life. And let God, by his spirit, show you these things so that you can throw them out. So you can cast out the devil's seed, his, his stuff that he's planted in your life to lead you astray, to make your witness dull before the world. We are lights in the world, not even just to each other. Let me go back for a second. Ugh. I've seen so much. I've heard so much. As far as we believers who say we love God. All the things that we are allowed, I mean, just talking and talking and talking. We, we got too many talk shows in our lives. Too many talk shows in our lives. We shouldn't have any of the world's doctrine going on in us. I'm, I'm sorry. And then again, maybe I'm not sorry. I'm sorry. Look at, look at, look at, let's get it straight. I'm not sorry for telling you this is the truth. We are not supposed to eat the world's doctrine anymore, their teachings anymore. We have more than enough Christian teachers in, in the medical field, in the medical field, in, in, in counsel. We have great counselors in God, not in the world. The world teaches you self-help. God teaches you wrestling and rely on him. God's, God's teaching says, come to me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, upon you and learn of me. You know? God has given us his, his grace and he's given us his mercy. Don't you know who God is? He is Jehovah Rapha, our healer. He doesn't just heal us from from a, a broke, you know, from diseases, but he heals us from broken hearts. He is Jehovah Jireh, the God who sees and provides. All of this in the name of Jesus Christ. He is Jehovah Ra. He is the God, the Lord, our shepherd. All of this, I'm going to keep on saying that, all of this in the name of Jesus. We don't need the counselors of the world. We need to rest, lean, and rely upon God. He is Jehovah Shalom, our peace. When we when we seem to lose our peace, through whether it be through anger or through sadness, the Lord knows how to give us peace through the situations and circumstances of life to speak his word to the situation to move the mountains or to get us through that part of the valley. He knows what he's doing, and I trust him because he created the world and all that there is in it. Who am I? I don't want to lean to my own understanding. I tried living this life like this. I have nothing else left. I have nothing else left. God alone is my portion, my meat and my drink day and night. I don't want anything else. And I'm tired of all the things that I've allowed into my life that bring in lust, that bring in death, that bring in a, a haughty spirit or, or even... A, what is that, when we're sarcastic, yeah, I used to watch, uh, I couldn't stand this one show, Raymond, because his mother was just so despicable to me, it's true, she was, but when I, when I would listen to people like her, it would bring out the cynical nature that used to live in me, and yet we identify with these things every day, we sit down, and we, we who say we love God, allow ourselves to sit down and be humored by the things of the world that are sinful. The things that we just, we don't do anymore, quote, we don't do. If we sit down and watch it, we're still doing it. We allow ourselves to pick up magazines off the, the store shelves and read these things and bringing it into our lives. We don't need this anymore. What did you, what did you get delivered from? What, what part of the Ten Commandments don't you understand? I mean, 
Is it, was it okay for us to stop breaking the laws? Yet it's okay for us to sit down and watch it and laugh at it. Now I don't I don't like Tyler Perry. I think he made he makes black folks look like buffoons. I don't like Tyler Perry because he has swayed those who say they love God to live in their flesh. And it's okay. It's funny for him to do all the things that he's done. And it's not that I didn't see a part of the movie. I really, There are some things I really want to watch. But I see how it ministered death to me and not life. You want to hear something great? Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the Lord. He is the Most High God. He is the Son of the Living God. You want to hear something great? We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We, you know, uh, I'm like at a deaf end here. Nobody seems to really believe that God is who he says he is. And they seem adamant to change my mind and make me do the things that they would do that are completely unfruitful. But the, I'll say it again. I have to say it, and it's not just a quote. The devil is a liar. You see, you got to know where the stuff is coming from sometimes. You got to know how he's using people to allow them, to entice them, to make them think that they're walking in a right way when they're walking wrong. You know, if your motive is not Christ, then I don't understand why you're doing it. Why do you say you live for Christ and that you're doing his will? Ministers I'm talking to now. I have to be careful. But why is it that you can't do it? Why is it that you seem to have a hard time walking with him alone? Now, I had to, I had to pause my tape for a minute <laughs> just to be able to say that the right way. Why is it that you seem to have a very hard time walking with him alone? Nobody, everybody who's been called of God, who says, I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Everybody that says that I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord is being, is getting their flesh crucified. They are dying to what they, they think. We're dying to what they feel. We're not being brainwashed, but being renewed in the knowledge of God, in the knowledge of the Son of God. Because you never knew him while you were walking in the earth. And I don't care how long you've been in church. We don't do things because it makes people feel good. We don't do things because it makes us feel so good. But there, are, there is a great benefit from God when we do it because we love him. Because I desire to see him glorified in the earth as he is in heaven. Everyone, every spiritual being, every spiritual being that you cannot see knows that God is who he says he is. Even if they, even if they, if they fell with Satan, they know God. <laughs> they know it. You have to understand that. They know that God is who he says he is and they do not deny it and they don't forget it. They just do their job. Why can't we who say we love God do the same thing without seeing him? He doesn't have to manifest before us before we do what he says because we love him. We desire to see his will done in the earth as it is in heaven. Glory to God. Don't let me fuss. This is Get the Word in Your Face with International Ministries with Pastor Cheryl Jackson. And I'm coming to you with the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Because this is the truth that makes us free. It is the truth of God, the truth of His Son Jesus Christ, the truth about His Holy Spirit, the truth. It is the truth. We can't teach this and not have repentance before God. We can't teach this and know who God is without knowing what knowing what we came from and not going back to it we got to leave dead things alone because we love him. 
I don't know that I'm scared about going to hell. I don't know that I'm scared about that. I don't want that. I really don't want that. But I want is his love. I, no one else in the, this earth could love me the way that God loves me. No one. And I can feel his love in my hands. I can feel him, his love in, in my ears just about. I can taste him. That's, I mean, I'm excited about how good he is. And yet the situations and circumstances in life come and they distract us from the knowledge of God. And we allow it. We don't fight back. We don't look up to heaven and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, you're, you reign. I oh, God, I pray your peace just come and flow all over me. Just pour on me like like a, a thick oil, a heavy anointing, Lord God, that I may do your will in the earth as it is in heaven. Help me to see past this situation and this circumstance so that you may have your way today in my life because, Lord God, I love you. In the name of Jesus. Nothing we should ask for should be denied as long as we ask according to his will. God is good and he is faithful to do what he promised. He said he would protect us. He said that he would honor us. He said that he would bless us. He said that if you believe, those who believe, Hebrews chapter 11. Without faith it is impossible to please God. For those who believe, who, without faith it's imp impossible to please God. Don't you like my really, really being real with you? But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Believing who God is is believing that, in verse, in verse 3 of chapter 11 of Hebrews, it says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. We believe what God said. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You must first believe that he is. That there is nothing impossible for God. It's not that you don't have worries. It's not that you don't have complaints. But we bring them before the throne of grace so that we can find mercy in our time of need. So then he can give us the strength that we need to come against the enemy, if it's him, or to overcome any temptation that's coming into our lives so that we can be prepared for the situation so that somebody that we're confronting today, somebody that we're coming into today, wherever we're coming into today, that they would receive the word of truth because the light is shining in you. You took everything that you have to him. It's not that we don't have complaints. It's not that we don't have aches and pains. It's not that we don't have things going on. It's just that we bring them to the Father of heaven and earth. That is the relationship we have. And he delivers us by his word. God has a way of doing things that is not like the world's way of doing things. Have you been birthed from the world's way of doing things to trust God, to tell him everything, to pour it out before him? And let him give you a word that changes the situations and circumstances of your life and someone else's. Get your mind out of the, the destruction of the world. These things have to happen. But we can pray for those to whom it is happening to. We can pray for those who despitefully use us. We can pray for our children. We can pray for our mothers and fathers and bring them out of the darkness and into the light. Because we know our Father in heaven is the one true almighty God who said that if you ask anything in my name, I will give it to you. And that doesn't mean ask for whatever you want because you know that the Bible also tells us that we ask amiss so that we can use it upon our own lust. But what he's talking about is asking his will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. He's saying, ask me. The Lord knows how to bring us out of our captivity and bring others out of their captivity so that they can see the light. 
so that we can do as the word says and come into to bring make people disciples we're supposed to go out into all the earth whatever part of the earth we're touching and speak a word that brings light so that they can come into the true knowledge of God and have eternal life like you do God gave us this gave us his son and we can live I love this look at um, in Luke Luke 10 it says in verse 18 I beheld Satan as lightning lightning fall from heaven behold I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you notwithstanding in this not don't rejoice and that you have power over the devils. That you the, rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. I don't boast about the things I do. I give glory to God because it's his work and not my own. I praise him <laughs> because he makes this word understood. I praise him because he's God and that he he took me in. I he 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 got me. I'm so glad that I have him. And I pray for others to have him too. I don't want to rejoice in my own strength because I didn't think of all this stuff he did. I just want to be in him. I I look forward to the greater life, the one where sin is not in the world. One where sin is not in the world. One where there is no darkness. One where there is light and the light is emanating only from him. I, I, oh my goodness, when I think about the Garden of Eden and how beautiful it had to be. Yet we were sub supposed to subdue that and take it over. And let nothing have authority or power over us. But we were supposed to speak the word of God, remember who he is, and speak his word, his truth, to the situations, to the circumstances, to trust him, to lean on, and to rely on him. So we rejoice that our name is written in the book, and yet we take hold of the very thing that he says and pray. The Bible tells us to pray at all times with all prayer and supplication. Make your requests known before God. Back to Romans. Almost done. Romans chapter 2, verse 17. Behold, thou art a Jew, and restest, restest in the law, and makes thy boast of God. And, know, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art judge of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor in foolish, in, of, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge, and of the truth of the law. Thou therefore, which teaching, which teaches the another, teachest thou not thyself? This is a good question. Let me go back and say it again because sometimes the King James English is a little hard. Let me see if I can translate it while I'm reading. Behold, you are called a Jew. Now, remember that they're talking to, to Israel then, okay? But it's, it's talking to us. Let's say that this is just talking to us. Let's not try to be, what's the word, <laughs> a theologian right now, even though we're all theologians. But some of us like to, be, to hold these words, <laughs> and I'm not trying to hold any. I'm looking at this as us, because it's who it's talking to. Listen by your heart. Behold, you are a Jew, and you rest in the law, and make your boast of God, and know his will, and approve 
the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law and are confident that you yourself are a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of truth in the law. You, therefore, which teach of the another, teach your, teach you not yourself. Don't you teach yourself? You that preach a man should not steal. Do you steal? You that say a man should not commit adultery. Do you commit adultery? You that arborist idols. Do you commit sacrilege? You that make thy boast of the law. You you that make your boast of the law through breaking the law dishonest dishonors do you dishonor your god you dishonor your god by breaking the law for the name of god is blasphemed among the gentiles through you as it is written for the circumcision the truly profiteth prophets if you keep the law but if you be a breaker of the law your circumcision is made uncircumcision therefore if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law shall not the uncircumcision be counted for circumcision it's interesting as I think about that and I think about how we allow things in our lives we might may have a lot of us are still doing pornography a lot of us are still masturbating a lot of us are still uh, you know just having uh, just having all types of lust in our hearts and in our minds even with food with animals we do everything and I'm just, we might as well make it plain it's time out for everything being shaded and leaving certain things in the dark that need to be brought forward. There's too much adultery going on in the church. We need to become clean, holy before God. He is Jehovah Mekadesh, our sanctifier. Jesus is holy. He was able to live in this flesh and blood body without sin. God himself came into this earth in the flesh, felt everything that we feel, and yet was tempted and without sin. He showed us that we could do this, that there is nothing, listen, that there is nothing impossible with God. We cannot say that we love God and then remain unholy or even do we defile ourselves with the things of the world there has to become a separation you have to examine the things in your life there are some things that that, that you just didn't know but now you know and you have to put these things out of your life now, as far as your children are concerned, and as far as those outside of yourself, if you need, if you if you can tell them and they know God, they they want know, to know God, then that's good. But if they're not interested, you yourself make your make a dividing line and make yourself holy before God, so that He can be, so that He can do what He's going to do through you to win the souls of others. To pull them back from the fire to save their lives listen and in that verse 27 and shall not uncircumcision which is by nature if it fulfill the law judge thee who by the letter of in circumcision does transgress the law for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly 
neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly. The circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men but of God. See, the circumcision of the flesh is a circumcision of the heart. It's not a circumcision of, you know, in the Old Testament, they cut away the foreskin. Well, this isn't, Jesus came and he brought us an inward, inside, in our heart circumcision. We understand that to love the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions, our thoughts, our desires, our feelings, and with all of our strength, we love God. There comes a time when all of these other things of, of the world, all the idolatry of our lives falls away. It, there comes a time, I mean, piece by piece, bit by bit, God through his word is renewing you in the knowledge of himself. And as he renews you, it's not just in head knowledge. Read this passage again. That was Romans chapter 2, verse 17 through 29. He is not just bringing you through the knowledge of words so that you can just have head knowledge. But he is taking this word and applying it to your heart, grafting it in the inner part of you because you desire him so much and his way of living and being. The Bible says to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all else will come. Everything else that you need of it is just going to fall into his place because we desire to know him. And we desire to live his way, God's right way of living, his way of living and being. And no man can think of that but God. God knows what he has in mind for what he has made, and we have to learn to trust him. One more, one more scripture in Romans chapter 7, starting in verse 25. I thank God, no, verse 24. 7 and 24, O wretched man that I am. This is our heart. This is us before the king. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through, through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but, but with the flesh the law of sin. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are, who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what I could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And I'm going to skip over to verse 13. For if, you live, if ye live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you live through the Spirit, if you through the Spirit, if you through the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Because it's him who grafts that word into our hearts. We can't rip up a Bible. You need this word. You need to be able to eat and to drink this word. Anytime you get a moment, a second, you need the word in your face so that you can drink and eat the living waters of God. He has given us everything we need. We, we need. The mysteries of God have been given for us to know. But we have to seek him. We have to diligently seek him. We have to go after him while he may be found. You know, we have to do it because we say we love him. And if you say that you love somebody, then you go after them. Do you go, I, I don't know not one relationship. I don't know not one relationship where you don't go after somebody, where you don't think about them all the time. But this is the relationship we have with him. 
We think about him all the time. We don't let the situation, every, any, let, let, let me put it like this. There's not a situation or a circumstance in this life that doesn't go to him. It's revealed before his eyes. It's, everything is naked and bare. It's open before him. And that's us taking everything to the one we love. We know that he will do what he said he would do. He will fulfill all of his promises. But we can't lean to our own understanding. We have to get the word in us and, and, and think about it and remember his promises. So I thank God for all of your listening ears. This is get the word in your face with Pastor Cheryl Jackson. And do just that today. Get the word in your face. God is love. Jesus is Lord. And the Holy Spirit is with us. God is with us. Father, in the name of Jesus, seal your word in our hearts and in our minds. Help us to come back and meditate on it. Forgive me for any babblings I might have done. And take those parts out and, and so that they can hear and eat your true word. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say bye-bye, Gigi. Bye-bye.